and we are live. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel. Today I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect preview and prediction for Rolly Romero defending his WBA 140 pound title against Isak Cruz this Saturday night in Las Vegas available on Amazon Prime. This is a really interesting fight and one where perhaps I'm a little bit more conflicted than I've seen other people. A lot of people feel that Isak Cruz is just going to walk through Rolly Romero and listen, I get it. We've seen Rolly's flaws. He didn't look good against an ancient Ishmael Barroso and Isak Cruz, the way he fights, you can just picture him having a lot of success against Rolly Romero. You know, Rolly's defensive flaws, the way he kind of pulls back with his chin in the air and leaves himself exposed. A lot of people can just picture Isak Cruz throwing those shots over the top, connecting and just overwhelming him and getting him out of there. And I get it. I can definitely see a world where that happens. But there's also a part of me where I feel, although Rolly Romero was a lightweight once upon a time and has moved up to 140, Isak Cruz is quite a short lightweight. And, you know, coming up to 140 pounds, it's not going to be as easy for him to get in close, especially against someone like Rolly. And I do feel whilst Rolly Romero isn't a particularly good fighter, he's certainly no Devin Haney, no Tank Davis, you know, not Teofimo Lopez, even though he likes to associate in that company, he's nowhere near those guys. But he's not Campbell Hatton either. You know, some people talk about him like he's totally useless. And I think someone like him that spent as much time around the best gyms in the US, around the best fighters with the best sparring, and has worked with so many good fighters, I don't think he's as bad as people kind of make him out to be. And I think his personality has definitely kind of led to that novelty element with him. But I think there are ways in which that if Isaac Cruz isn't at his best, or if Isak Cruz cruises at any point in this fight, I do feel there's a way for Roddy Romero to win it and look good in doing so as well. So I don't necessarily see it as the whitewash as some people do. A fight that I kind of liken it to is Marcus Maidana um, against Adrian Broner. Now, Marcus Maidana was much more of a fully-fledged welterweight at the time, so you, you know, Isak Cruz is someone that's coming up from 135 and looks undersized. Maidana wasn't. But Broner... And, and Rolly, I can kind of see the similarities where they rate themselves higher than they actually were. And defensively, there were some flaws there. And a come-forward aggressor that can throw big punches and loop shots over the top and just make it uncomfortable for you. And as long as they're busy for enough of the fight, we'll get the win. I feel like there's a lot of similarities there. And I can definitely see a world in which that ultimately Cruz lands early. Rolly then is able to recoup some of the rounds, but then late on, Cruz just kind of stamps home the win and maybe a knockdown or two in there that becomes a mean moment or whatever. But I think there's similarities between that fight. But I'm not totally counting out Rolly Romero in this fight. A lot of people that are picking Cruz think it's a whitewash. I may pick Cruz as you watch this video, but I don't think it's a whitewash necessarily, so we'll get into it. To talk about Isak Cruz then, I don't know whether it's other people, you know, whether people are in the same boat as me, but... Don't particularly rate him, to be honest. I can see why you wouldn't want to fight him. He's a nightmare stylistically. You know, any Mexican fighter that can come forward and throw a lot of punches and has a good chin and can really take a shot and has decent power themselves is going to be a nightmare in any weight class. Everyone wants to avoid that, especially if you're British. We don't have a good record against them. But I just feel from what I've watched and even, you know, some of his most devastating performances, I've never watched Isaac Cruz and think, that guy's a real problem for the top guys. Now... A lot of people felt he pushed uh, Javante Tank Davis close. I personally felt that the injury really did hinder Tank Davis, and that's not me making excuses for him. But I think if he'd been able to throw shots with both hands, I think he probably would have been able to get Isak Cruz out of there late on, or at least would have been able to have more control of the fight and make Cruz a little bit more tentative. And he wasn't able to do that. He wasn't able to keep him off as much as he would someone else. And I think stylistically, it's not a bad fight for Cruz because Cruz is busy, Tank is not. And if you can outwork Tank... You know, unless he connects with a big shot and is able to get to you at some stage, you know, you can win rounds off him. So I'm not surprised that fight was close, but I do feel it's a different fight if Tank has two functioning hands. I think if they rematched, you'd see that as well. But outside of that, you know, his last fight against Cabrera, many people felt that that was close. It was obviously a split decision. Some people, you know, not happy with the decision. Some people felt that it shouldn't have been a split decision. It was one of those fights where, again, I don't think Isak Cruz really did enough to impress me. And whilst he has performances where he's blown people away, again, I just never looked at him as that guy that I think you avoid him like the plague. I think he's a nightmare, especially for someone like Rolly that isn't Tank, Haney, Tio, and that level of, of fighter. But I can see why he's a handful, but I also think moving up to £140, Roley is definitely his entry into the world title scene there. Because any of the other champions, if you look at Mateus, if you look at Haney, if you look at Tiafimo, I don't think he's getting anywhere near those guys. So 
Good fighter, Issa Cruz, but I don't quite rate him as highly as some people do. Moving on to Rolly Romero, again, I don't rate him highly at all, but I don't think he's as bad as people make out. I think because he was unbeaten and coming through in the lightweight division at the time with Devin Haney, with Javante Davis, with Tiafimo Lopez, with Ryan Garcia, he tried to associate himself with that company. And I think ultimately people very quickly realised that he's nowhere near that and his performances ultimately proved that. The Jackson Mariners fight, I thought he lost. I thought that was a bad decision personally and I wasn't impressed. But I think he's had moments against Anthony Yidget and has had performances, Rolly, where I think, okay, he's clearly got enough about him to get to a certain level. And I don't think he's too far off world title level, but in a division with elite fighters, he's just not going to break through. And against Javante Davis, I called that fight down to a T in my preview and prediction. I felt that he'd look good for a couple of rounds, but once Javante you know, found the target, it was going to be game over. And that's ultimately what happened. Javante Davis was the worst possible style for him. Again, similar to Ryan Garcia. If you leave your chin in the air for too long, Javante is exactly the fighter that's going to make you know, you make you look like an idiot and put you on the canvas because that's just his bread and butter. His time encounters is picking his punches accurately and just waiting for the perfect shot. And that's ultimately what Rolly Romero presented and Ryan Garcia presented. So from there, Rolly moves up to 140 pounds, gets the shot against Ishmael Barroso. It was obviously supposed to be Alberto Pueo, but he obviously had a drugs test and lost his belt in the process. Against Ishmael Barroso, many people felt that he should just walk through an ancient Barroso who very much looks like he belongs in a retirement home at this stage. But he struggled. He struggled badly in that fight. He was hurt in that fight. And Barroso, to his credit, was brilliant. And I said at the time going into it, don't underestimate Barroso because he is clearly a very dangerous fighter on his day. We'd seen him come to the UK and, and we saw his performance against Kevin Mitchell and then where he was devastating and then saw him against Anthony Crawler, who's... A very kind of, again, Anthony Crawler's one of the nicest guys in British boxing, so I don't want to be harsh, but he's a very average fighter. Anthony Crawler did amazingly well to win a world title and have some great nights over in Manchester, but really and truly not a great fighter. But I believe Barroso could be dangerous. He's a heavy-handed southpaw that's crafty. That's always going to be an issue for any fighter on the planet. And he made a mockery of Rolly Romero, in all honesty, and Rolly got bailed out with the worst stoppage of last year. Everyone said it. No one agreed that it wasn't one of those stoppages where you can kind of see both sides of the coin. Everyone wanted, you know, the referee's head on a, on a stick. And everyone, you know, was frustrated for Barroso and angry at Rolly. And I completely understood it because it was a rubbish stoppage where Rolly got bailed out of a fight that he was losing and going to lose. So I completely understand the outrage. But even off the back of that, even thinking he lost against Jackson Mariners, even expecting him to get wiped out by Tank and not thinking he's anywhere near that level, I still think against Isaac Cruz he can be competitive. Don't get me wrong, I think he's going to have to be perfect to win. I think Rolly's got enough size, enough speed and enough skill. Again, he hasn't got these things in abundance, but he's got decent power, respectable power. He's got good speed. It's his skill that's lacking and his defence that ultimately costs him. But I think he's got the tools to win rounds against Cruz. I think he's got the tools to win uh, sort of stages of the fight, you know, win three or four on the spin against Cruz. But ultimately, I think the fight that's going to have a bigger moments in this is more likely to be Isak Cruz. So getting into my prediction, I'll be honest with you, I'm really struggling to pick a winner because... I think the fact that everyone's just picking Cruz to win kind of, to me, feels a little bit too simple, seems a bit too obvious. And that's not me just wanting to go against the grain for the sake of going against the grain. I'm not someone that does that with predictions. I'd rather be right than, you know, be completely out of the ordinary with a, with a take or a pick or a prediction. But I can't help but feel that I think Ronnie's just more live in this than perhaps being made out. And maybe it's that Cruz is going to win, but just not in the whitewash fashion that everyone expects. So I'm going to pick Isak Cruz to win. I'm kind of going to follow the crowd a little bit on this one. But I think it will kind of be similar to Maidana versus Broner, where people's memories of that fight is Maidana beating up on Broner and him falling through the ropes and, you know, brush my hair and all that sort of stuff. But Broner actually coming back into the fight and winning rounds, but ultimately Maidana having bigger moments and getting the knockdowns. I think that's what's going to happen here. I think Rolly's going to win six or seven rounds. But I think maybe a knockdown or two for Cruz or the bigger moments in the fight and the bigger rounds in the fight coming for Cruz is going to be what makes many people feel like he's won it. So I think it's going to go to a decision. I think it's going to be razor close. I think Rolly's going to feel hard done by and many people are going to be surprised at how well he does. 
But I think Cruz having bigger moments in the fight is ultimately going to be what the judges decide to roll with. But I think Raleigh can win this. I don't see it as a whitewash. I think he can win this. And this may age badly, but I'm going to pick Cruz but in a competitive fight. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you guys next time. Thank you.